So we were this close to have an episode without BTS, but... <laughs> Welcome to Sparkling Harmonies. We're your hosts, Lily. And Francois. And we are two friends who don't quite listen to the same music or genres. But we are here to talk about everything and anything music related. Yay! Yay! So today's episode, we're going to be focusing on how invested you get. we get personally into music. You know, some people are just casual listeners, others... Um, will consider themselves even less than casual listeners. Like they just don't even listen. They'll, they'll just listen to whatever's playing, but they won't really look into it. And there's me who goes and watches all the videos. Um, so we we wanted to have a discussion. And because, I mean, by that, by by this point, I think you, everybody knows how I am, but um, I'm not like that with all bands. So that, that's also something that we're going to be discussing. Um, um, also this, oh. I, I think, a part of you mix collector and music listener together, maybe. But not just that. I mean, like, well, we'll get into it later. But you know, there's like also there are people who collect but won't listen to, or won't watch interviews or won't you know read articles yeah, and stuff like that. So there's also that point that I wanted to bring up. Um, this is going to be our uh, last episode before we take a little break. Um, we I think we're, we're not sure if we're going to take the whole month of September. Maybe just like one week off. Um, but, uh, we're going to take a little break. It's been almost a year yes, where we consistently released. And at the beginning, we were even very motivated and we released two episodes at every beginning of the month. Um, so <laughs> we're, we're going to just take a little break to brainstorm, maybe pre-record a few episodes in case it locks down again. Well, uh, well, I mean, it's not going to really change anything because we, we haven't really recorded in person yet. Um, but uh, maybe after the vacation time, maybe, maybe I'm almost done with my little studio space. So maybe at least one fingers crossed. <laughs> fingers crossed. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's, uh, that's going to be it for us for a little bit. And before we get into our, uh, our real subject of the day though, what have you been listening to this week, Francois? I have a... A new crush, but a renewed crush with uh, Biba Dobi. Mm -hmm. I remember. I remember you talked yeah. about this. What did you talk about her the last time? Uh, her her album because she had an album out at during twenty twenty. She oh. didn't had a chance to tour with it, right. and during like, lockdown, oh. she decided to do a little um, EP slash surprise album. Okay, and she continued digging into the nineties. Okay. Um, seriously, it's like. The soundtrack of She's All That. Mm. She, it's more on the poppy side, but mm -hmm. still guitar driven. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't know if you remember um, uh, Liz Fair, I think her name, or Sixpence None Richer. Yes. So when I was listening to the song you sent me, I was like, this gives me Sixpence None the Richer vibes. Yeah. And, uh, uh, 100%. I don't remember the name of the band, but She's So High, the, the song. It, it's um, another song from the same era. It, okay. You, 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 you hear, you feel that vibe and it's cool. And I think she put more time in producing videos mm -hmm. because the, the video clip, the first clip is, uh, is like a little movie. Okay. It, it's a gang working together, uh, as, a how you say, um, the <laughs> lucky, um, it, it's like a, a big mansion, and they are a worker over there. Okay. Uh, some uh, uh, gardener, some uh, uh, cookers, whatever. Mm -hmm. And they cooks, cooks. Sorry. <laughs> and they they do uh they they beat up someone to steal him like his money and stuff like that. So it, it's like a, a mini movie. So mm -hmm. probably because there's no shows, so they try to I do mean something else. There are shows by now, like the main and all-time low and grayscale are on tour right now. <laughs> yeah, in the United States. But yeah. Uh, Diba Ruby, she's in, uh, in England. Oh, okay. I see. But the main are going to to the UK in the fall. So she she tries something new, a bit new. Uh, it's 
she she teamed up with the the guys from 1975. I didn't know that oh, band. Okay, I did. So there's two guys from the band that help her to record and write the album. That's and cool. I, I see that a bit like uh, Machine Gun and uh, Travis, Travis Barker. It's yeah. like an older group helping a new artist to mm -hmm. stay relevant and probably, I don't know, maybe announce a new album for them or a new tour because you, you get the sense of what what's cool, what's fun, what's mm -hmm. what what what's new. in what's in so it, it so you feel it a bit because it's more mature like mature it, mature yeah um it, it's more accomplished i don't uh, i'm missing the word oh, but sound yeah so it they, they polish it a bit more they try something different uh we heard her voice it's it's more like singing than mm -hmm. just be like in a rock song type so it's cool it's, it's simple easy listening but fun Perfect for yeah. a road trip or a teen movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's funny because really what the... If you weren't going to mention Six Pence and the Richer, I was. Because when I listened to that song, I was like, wait, this, yeah. this sounds like Kiss Me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally, totally. And just a, a little segue, they did a remake of She's All That. It's oh, really? Memphis, and it's called He's All That. Okay. <laughs> they, they reverse it and... Uh, I don't remember her name, but the actress that plays the girl and she's all that. I'm not good with actor names. And but she she's she's the mother oh, in the new the movie. Guy. So so funny. I, I I don't know if it's good or not, but they did a remake of the movie and the song "Kiss Me." So probably a bit nostalgia and mm. and fun, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and what about you, Lily? What are you listening to? Um. So. Grayscale's album dropped last Friday. I mean, Grayscale and like everybody else. I actually, I was up at midnight um, because I on Thursday because I knew a lot of bands that I liked were releasing music. I didn't realize that many were. Okay. I was <laughs> up surprise. until like I was up until almost two, and I was working on Friday, <laughs> and I was like, I can't stop. This is also new. This is also new. Um, but I'm going to first talk about uh, Grayscale. So they released Umbra, which yep. is their third album. It's so good. So good. Like, I've been listening to it nonstop since. Um, it's so they had released, they had previously released, I think, three tracks from the album um, Babylon, I think, Dirty Bombs, and they had just, just, just released uh, Live Again. Um, on Wednesday, and it was funny because they released Live Again on as a music video, but it wasn't on Spotify, okay. um, which was surprising. But I mean, the, the it was going to be in the next two days anyways. Um, but what was interesting from this album is there's two tracks that I can remember, Without You and Live Again, where they've got these choir vocals, um, and they've also got brass instruments and saxophone. Oh. On um on without you anyways they do I'm not sure about the other ones but that 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 track really stood out to me because it's the first song off the album okay and it's like this whole different sound um and I was like wait what and then the rest of the album though is it's their classic you know more pop punk sound with their guitar riffs and the awesome vocals um but uh, yeah so I've been loving it it's really good everybody oh, should cool. really check it out. Uh, Live Again is my favorite from the album just because it's a more meaningful song, okay. I feel like. It's like the lyrics touch on, um, I think, somebody who's ill um, okay. and you being like there to support them and wanting them to get better. Um, and it's just, uh, I, I'm, I've always been more a fan of those type of like kind of more ballad, more mellow songs off of pop punk albums um so that one fits my vibe and like i said at the end there's the choir that kind of jumps in and so the sound just feels really full um and uh so i i really i've been really enjoying that album a lot oh cool that that's fun it's there's always a little apprehension when you you have a new album from a band you really like so yeah. it's fun when you discover okay it's still good i still like it Mm -hmm. But like for me, Grayscale, I I've been I was kind of late to the party. 
Okay. Um, like I had known who they were before just because they were in the same circles as like a lot of the other bands I listened to, but I didn't really listen to them like intentionally until okay. the beginning of the pandemic when I had put on their album Nella Vida on repeat. And that's when I was like, wow, I've been sleeping on this band. Why did I not <laughs> listen to them before? Um, why did I not get into them before? Because I would have probably seen them in concert before. Um, they were probably at Warped Tour when I was there. Probably. So now I'm just like, oh, <laughs> no. You miss all that. <laughs> yeah. But I guess it's a be better late than ever, though. So Yeah. Oh, yeah. cool. And what and else have you been listening to? For me, there's a new thing again. It's uh, Creeping Dead. It's a band from Texas. I saw them live with Power Trip, one of my favorite metal band. Uh, they, are, they they really bring like the old school stuff. It's yeah, it's dead metal, but like from back in the day, from the 90s, 80s. Okay. So it, it's just fun. There's no... Uh, there's no electronic drums. There's no grid. There's nothing. Oh. You just go with the flow. It, they look like normal dude, no technician, just fun guys. And that's okay. I will do a parallel with Biba Doobie, but it's still the same thing. It's simple, but effective. Mm. So, and they have a video. It's pretty weird. It, I, I'm pretty sure it's like a green screen, but a cheap one. Mm. <laughs> so, they're supposed to be in the nature with the abandoned house behind them, but you always see the little blur around them. <laughs> Maybe sure. they just want to throw something like <clears throat> out there, like how we have a video, but it's just weird because mm. they, they don't move. They, they just play the, the song. It's just boring, but funny in the same time. Mm. And I really enjoyed the new song. Uh, they announced an EP for, I think it's for the next month. And, but that's funny because, uh, the, like, like we said at the beginning of the episode, we maybe have a little windows of time. We will probably be together. And after it probably be another lockdown. It's for them is the same thing. They're like, maybe it's the last thing we will do till the next lockdown. So we mm -hmm. they try to like, they build like many songs and like, okay, we take those five, record them, push them and hope for the best. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because I don't, I don't know. Like here, here, there's a variant that's coming around, and you know, but I don't know. I don't know what it's gonna be. I don't want another lockdown. I have concert tickets for October. <laughs> Me too. And what about you? <laughs> uh, so the other, the other, I, I've been listening to a lot of stuff, but um, the other one that I wanted to mention was uh, State Champs. State Champs just released a new song on Wednesday. I think it was Wednesday the, last week. Uh, yes. um, so this was their first song since last year when they released their Unplugged uh, EP, um, oh. where they redid some of their songs uh, acoustic. And I think they, they released a couple of newer songs acoustic as well. It's been like almost a year or a little bit more than a year since they last released music, which is really exciting. Um, and this one was more their traditional, you know, energetic song. Um, it's called Just Sounds. It's really good. And the music video is really funny. Uh, I don't know if you saw it. Uh, no, no. Sorry. I'll, send, I'll send it to you. So the the lyric, the the music video is really funny. Um, one 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 thing that that keeps popping up everywhere on like Twitter and Instagram is uh, Derek, who is dressed as Bob Ross, um, in the video. So <laughs> it's it's really funny. So uh, yeah, so that's been another song that I've been listening to that I've been really excited about. It makes me really excited because that means that maybe they're going to be releasing new music as well. They've been hinting at. The, the, the yeah. fact that they've been working on new music. So cool. I'm really excited for this too. Um, but uh, did you have anything else? Not precisely, but I kind of start to dig what Every Living is doing right now. He's doing stuff? Uh, she, she's starting to come back. Uh, I, she, she was on the last Mudson album. So mm -hmm. she had a big presence with him. I think the song is called Fire or something like that. Okay. Uh, that was pretty popular. They did like 20 versions, like a remix one, an acoustic one, a piano one, whatever. It's like Butter it, by BTS. Yeah. It, <laughs> but I think it's a, it's a new way to promote something. Right. 
like this song was really popular at the beginning so they tried to like repeat the cycle mm-hmm. and now she's with uh, Alicia Rodriguez she play with Young Blood uh, and she she start to get her toes into like the new pop punk maybe okay. stuff and i saw maybe i don't know like 10 videos of her playing with other and that that's cool because i don't remember last time she had an album out Seriously? i don't know i know she she did music with travis from we the kings like two years ago i feel like i have a memory of that okay um but i haven't really been oh. following her since it since it's complicated I like skating. Oh <laughs> <laughs> I, I know I know she she doesn't have like 20 albums. I, maybe she like five, six albums mm. in the last 15 years. Mm-hmm. But may, maybe I'm wrong, but she looks like she has something coming along, maybe. Mm. She 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 started to came back because I don't know if she had kids or stuff, no life stuff. I don't know, but she just disappeared for like the I think she had Lyme years. disease. Oh, okay okay while, yeah that's what i had heard but this was like oh quite a while ago so but yeah so I, I just dig into the youtube stuff to see like oh, okay she did she did something with him she did something with the other one and i just discovered and i'm surprised because i i wasn't a fan of every living but i didn't hate her either i was mm-hmm. just okay it's, it's cool it's okay but i just realized she had a really great voice <laughs> Mm-hmm. Like she, she, she can sing. Like, yeah, seriously, I was surprised to just realize that. Yeah, no, I, I used to like her, like not actively following her, but you know, whenever her music came on, I was like, oh, that's good. I'm, I'm not sure I ever bought her CD, but I, 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 I did like quite a few of her songs back then. Oh, maybe, no. maybe something coming along in 2022. Maybe, maybe. And so I'm just going to like name a bunch of other stuff okay. because uh, take note people take note. <laughs> like I said on on fr- on like midnight on Thursday to Friday I was just like I opened up Spotify and there was so many what's new for me. <laughs> so other than Grayscale, other than St. Champs with Confidence released their album um and I've been talking about this a lot because they kept dropping songs like I I heard half of the album by the time it was out. And actually the week before they were stre- they had streamed the album fully on Adobe Radio, I think. Okay. So I had heard like part of it. Um so that it's it's really good. It's like very classic uh with confidence. I feel like it sounds a little bit more soft than what they used to do, but okay. then again, I haven't listened to their their older albums in a while, so I feel like Their EPs, when they had first started, were pretty heavy, and then it it gradually became less um, less heavy, but, I mean, that's fine. That's just how their their sound has evolved. Um, But uh, some some of my favorite tracks off that album are City, Atlanta, and Paper. Paper was a song that we talked about with Liz that I really liked. Um, City is a little bit more of the upper, like, more heavier sounding tracks. And uh, Atlanta is more of like a ballad-ish. Um, so that's that was really exciting. Our Last Night released a cover of Stay um, by uh, Kid Leroy and Justin Bieber. Okay. Um, and it's so good. It's so good. Um, so I, I have never been a big fan of Screaming. In general, which is why I don't think I can get into metal. But oh, come on. <laughs> but our last night, they do have some screaming sometimes. Not a whole lot. It never takes up like the whole song. Um, but like Stay is one of those really popular pop songs right now that's on the radio and everything. And so hearing their take on it with like a little bit of scream was really good. I, I oh. honestly I, I 100 percent recommend that that cover. It's really good. Um, the Summer Set also released their first song in five years. Um, they had like kind of disbanded f- five years ago and they, they decided four of them to come back together and release this song. So that's really also super exciting because they keep that. I think they're hinting at more. Um, and uh, a little <laughs> segue, Jess, their, their drummer, she's part of a documentary on drummers that's right now on Netflix. Oh, because in the past few years, she's been drumming with like a bunch of other people. So, okay. um, 
she, she's part of that documentary. Um, so the Somerset Street Lightning, um, that was really good too. And the last one was Butter by BTS. It, they released a cover with uh, Megan V. Stallion. Um, and it, it, was, it was a crazy week because we had learned about this collaboration like on Tuesday because they were in court for it. Why? Because Megan, like they, they had done a swap collaboration deal. So that means that, you know, they, that they're probably going to feature on one of her songs in the future, but, um, her label was blocking it. Her label didn't want it to get released. Why? Because they didn't I, want to work with, I don't remember the company behind BTS. I, I, I don't know. Um, so I didn't read a lot, up a lot on it. Um, but this is not the first time that she has had trouble with her label. Like she sued her, her label in the past. Um, and, uh, and Agreed so working in environment. <laughs> right? And so they went to court to get it released. And I think Hybe uh, fought so that all, all the money goes to her rather than it being split for nice. this, this remix. So, so that's really cool. So like, I think her. it was, yeah. So it was like on, like she had to pay a TRO for a it. What? Uh, oh man. Now this is when I'm like, I know the term, but then I forget it because I only have the uh, temporary restraining order. Okay. Uh, for it to be released. And it, she, she, I think she paid a hundred thousand or something. Um, so that was released on Friday. It's, it's really good. It's, it's very um, like she, she, she didn't only just put a verse in like she's at the beginning and then she kind of wraps with them a little bit. And then she adds, she has her own verse. So it's, it's, it's a whole different version, um, which is really interesting as well. So oh, cool. So we were this close to have an episode without BTS, but <laughs> and another, another thing that released was real friends, real friends. Uh, they also released an EP on Friday and real friends. This is, I think it's their first EP since their, uh, they changed their singer. Um, so it sounds quite different. Um, I was, I was, I was, uh, texting Kim when all, when all this was happening, cause she was also listening to all this music at midnight. Um, <laughs> and she was like, the voice is sounds, um, it's just, it's a less like heavy grungy voice. Um, so it sounds quite different, but it's it's still good. I think the new singer's name is Cody, Cody something. So okay, but so yeah, that was my like new music Friday last week. <laughs> I was like overwhelmed. <laughs> but remember when we did our um, what we're waiting for in 2021? We we were I don't know discussing about maybe lockdown will help artists and band to record mm -hmm. write new song. Maybe we're like. It's now like we see the result of yeah that maybe time. maybe but I'm just I'm just really excited to see all these bands in concert now <laughs> I'm just like, maybe 2022 2023 mm. <laughs> oh. so now that we got all of that out of the way um let's get into today's subject so how invested do can people get when they listen to music. Like I mentioned earlier that, you know, some people, they just put music on when they're driving, when they're working without really paying attention to it. And then they, they're not really interested in finding out about bands or, or anything like that. Like I know I, when I was in optometry school, that was definitely me because I just did not have time to put, put time and energy <laughs> zero, but usually when I get into, like, when I really get into a band, I just want to know a lot more about them. So I will read the news articles. I will read interviews. Maybe that's also because I used to do interviews. Maybe, yeah. Just to read. To feel it because it's different. Maybe. Um, but, like, for, for BTS, you know, they have, well, I guess them it's because there's so much content, it makes you want. To watch all of that too um so what about you what about you what do you do it, when it, it depends uh I, I have like a little <laughs> diagram in my head depends okay. on what i discover uh the first first question is if it's a black metal band 
I will check out if they are nazi, nazi or something like mm. that because uh, it's happened more often than never. So mm. it's, it's the first thing I check in that sphere of music uh, because I don't want to encourage people with their hatred philosophy. Is, so first yeah, thing, that's fair. but I think there's like two two different approach depend if the band is new or it's mm. a well established band mm -hmm. because it's a band is a, it's a newcomer like i don't know i, I discover a, a new band i will try to just leave it like discover it like day by day and don't try to push it too far i i, I want to keep it like fresh and new and surprising okay so i will try to like <clears throat> just enjoy the ride mm -hmm. but if it's an older band i would probably like jump in like first of all listening to the whole catalog because you want to know why it's like for example how, what, where it, how it became how where yeah, it is today. and what's make them like relevant when they came out because mm -hmm. sometimes it's not it's not obvious like I, for example, I'm pretty sure if someone discovered like Pink Floyd or Black Sabbath today, it's like, okay, it's like old music. But if you put yourself in 1960 something and you discover that like metal it wasn't a thing or mm. like psychedelic music wasn't a thing and mm -hmm. they were the first to, first. it's like, I, I, I like that historical research, if, if okay. I may, like, to see how it was back then to yeah. be that band or at least to be someone discovered a band back in the day. But it's deep end because I, I don't know what made the click, but sometimes there's been, I just don't feel like I need to get into. Mm -hmm. I, will, I, I enjoy the song, but that's it. Well, see, it's the same thing for me. So I, wait, let's take Grayscale, for example. Grayscale, I've been listening to their album a lot since it released on Friday. Um, we're just Sunday by now, but um, still. I've listened to this album from start to finish at least three or four times. Um, and uh, um, that, I, I don't know. I don't feel compelled to, I don't feel the need to look up interviews or anything about them. I don't know why. For, Magic. There's something. <laughs> versus, you know, like the main. I I bought Rock Sound recently because they're the cover of it, um, and I'm on their subscription uh, their subscription annual subscription pillar fans. I guess it's platform, um, even though I barely use it because it's not it doesn't work well on Android. I so I'd never get the notifications. Um, guys, fix that, please. <laughs> Android. <laughs> Uh, but now I have an iPad, so I installed it on my iPad so that I could get notifications. Uh, because I, what I ended up, what I realized was I paid for it last year and opened it maybe like five times. Um, but I mean, this is money that goes directly to them. So I probably would, I, that's why I renewed it anyways. Um, but, you know, so for the main, I, I, I always want to stay up to date with what's happening. And maybe it's also because they're just so active on social media. Yeah, but maybe they encourage it. Like, yeah by being active, like it's bring you to them each time. So each time you forget about them, there's something new. Yeah, so. absolutely. And then, you know, when, when I got into day six last year and then BTS, there's just so much content, like videos, not, not necessarily interviews, but for, for day six anyways, but just like videos that they've recorded, um, live videos that they did, you know, where they were practicing or, you know, so there's just all this backlog where that I was interested to see how they had grown. And I think that's something that's very common in uh, K-pop okay. because these guys, they are followed sometimes from the time before they're debuting officially as a band, they're already releasing this like content. And then once they are uh, once they have debuted, now it's just like, it just continues. I mean, if I just look at BTS, they've, they've got every week, they've got a run episode or almost every week, okay. which is their variety show. There are now two, uh, 140 something episodes of this out. Um, I am now at a hundred. 
Um, it's a, so, it's a full time job. So there's that. There's four seasons of Bon, bon Voyage, which is them traveling. Okay. Um, there's In the Sioux, which is them like hanging out at a cottage, which is like a whole season of them hanging out. This was during the pandemic. Um, and then there's, there's like just every time they release an album, they do a comeback live, which is like an hour or an hour and a half of them doing random stuff. Uh, so there's just all this. And then on top of that, you add all of their just random live videos where they just decided to go live and chat. Okay. And I, I, I haven't really gotten into that because there's just so much, but I know a lot of people, a lot of people will go back. I have one of my friends, she goes back and she's been watching them from the start. Okay. Cause then you see the kind of the evolution of the person of their success, how it's affecting them and everything. So, um, it, it yeah. feels like uh, they mix like music with influencer, YouTuber, Twitch. Like they try to grab like everything that works in those universe and bring yeah. them into one thing. Yeah, and I feel like for me, anyways, that works. Why? And YouTube is pretty popular, so I guess it works for many people, but depend on the subject. Yeah. Because like they, it it makes you want to learn about how and and with with bts specifically because they're so big now and they were like they started off really from nothing i i i was interested in seeing like that evolution and there are so many fan-made videos of like the bts story or whatever also like but there's just so like I, i put these into my watch later and then i never go and watch them <laughs> because they're just so long um but Yeah, so there's bands like that, like Day Six and BTS, where I just completely submerged myself into that world because I just want to learn more. But you mentioned going back and kind of figuring out how they used to be when they were first released. I don't necessarily have, like, I don't look into the history. Okay. But then again, like, all the bands that I get into are still, like, recent. Yeah. But so. sometimes it's it's a it's an answer to something else, if I may. For example, when I discover like the punk era of the end of the 80s and start of 90s in New York and stuff like that, uh, it was during the 1989 uh, economic crisis, mm. and like this movement was a, an answer to like. Okay, people are getting richer, they profit from people. Uh, and so we as poor people, we try to answer it. Like that was interesting because music come from that and not necessarily from some individuals, mm -hmm. but more of an answer of something happening. So mm -hmm. maybe it's why I, I like this part because in the meantime, you, you feel why This, it they decide, yeah, why it's happened. Like you see shows like under bridges with they mm. steal electricity from a building across the street, and the police came in, beat up everyone, and like it, it, it was pretty chaotic. But it's interesting to see because people in front of the band sometimes they were homeless people, mm. so they, they try to bring like food and stuff to those people. Like oh. it, it sometimes it's bigger than just. The band music. or yeah so that's why i like that but like you said sometime with newer band you the, the information is already there mm. like like you said with bts did i i don't know if it's a, the, the the goal behind but they are producing their own autobiography like live yeah, basically so yeah. you don't have to wait until there's the official mm -hmm. biography like you You, you leave it and you, you discover it by <clears throat> just be interesting in the band. Yeah. I feel like there's more and more like, you know, before you would get years later, the autobiography of so-and-so, but I feel like now with social media, it's yeah. going to be less, less and less um, interesting. But like, I mean, of course they are just going to show one side to social media. So there might still be like the, under biography <laughs> you know um the other side but um 
But then again, I mean, it's it'll always, always, always just be one side. But BTS has like a documentary series of them going on tour. And it's like there's three documentary, three or four documentaries. So it's pretty available <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, like you see, like, of course you won't see all of it. But you see sometimes after the shows, the guys are like being hooked up to oxygen. They're like on the floor. Um, sometimes you see like there's there there's one clip. I haven't watched these yet because I'm just getting like updated on run. I'm doing one thing at a time. <laughs> I'm on episode 100 of run. And then every every week when the new episode comes out, my whole Twitter is spoiling. So I'm like, OK, I can't look at Twitter for like. Whole, <laughs> um, Twitter doesn't exist for now. <laughs> Uh, but you know, so you see, you still see like some of the hardships that they go through. Um, like, like I was mentioning that, that clip, there's one, it's the, one of the guys, he's just so exhausted after the show and he's lying on the floor and there's like the whole team around him. He's getting hooked up to oxygen. They're getting him like towels. And and then you see him like he needs to get up because there's another song to perform. <laughs> and then an he encore. gets up, he gets up, and like he, you just see that he's exhausted. But then the moment he appears in front of the crowd, then it's like he changes because he can't show. He doesn't want to show that, and that that kind of makes me sad because like knowing. So, you know, as when you're just a, a casual listener, you don't see all this. You don't, I feel like you don't, <clears throat> well, I mean, it, and it, it, it's not necessarily a bad thing. You don't really connect to the, the musicians. You don't, you know, it's, for you, it's just music. But for me, like, I just, I'm just like, these guys, because of all the content that they're releasing, like these guys, <laughs> after watching all of this, I'm like, these guys need a real vacation. That's not filmed. Yeah, by themselves. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, being invested and watching all of this, it makes you realize that because when you're disconnected from it, you know, you're just like, oh, well, they're releasing music, they're touring, they're, you know, they're, they're doing making all money. this stuff. Yeah. But then you see these kind of under, behind the scenes, and it's like, they've worked a lot. Yeah. But <laughs> what, what, Where's the the line between like being invest in a band and being a fan, like fanatism? Mm. Because when when I get into a band, sometimes I, it's it's where I I see the line in quote unquote because you, you meet like people that really fans and mm. they they don't have a perspective. So mm -hmm. this band or this artist is the best and you can't have like a normal discussion you can't say this song is not the best or mm. this show was so so no mm -hmm. so sometimes it's it, the two universe came it's it's hard yeah because like i have definitely lived through moments where i'm like i don't like this band or i don't like what they're releasing anymore Or even like in the past few years with the Me Too movement, mm -hmm. so many guys are just assholes and you're just like, do you want to keep supporting that music? Does it taint the music? Can you can you really dissociate the artist from the art? And that's that's when it gets really hard because there's all these people who are like, I still support them, but you're like, But the guy slept with underage girls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I and it, it's I don't know, it's hard because there's it's it's mostly emotional. You you, you can't have a, a real discussion with someone like that. And mm. I I'm really curious about um I don't remember the name of the phenomenon, but uh the Japanese men that follow uh teen idol everywhere. Mm. Is there a natural term? I'm pretty sure Japanese are really great to oh, name true. stuff. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, I think I think you you uh, share me um, a documentary. Yeah, a trailer about that. And I don't remember like, the, the the name. Okay. But I think it's just, it's just Japan Idol or something like that. But it, it's it's I think when you go there because 
they, they, they quit their jobs. They probably quit their families because they follow a band or artist like 24 seven for a whole year and many years. Yeah. So I, when you're there, there I'm, I think you're not just into a band. Like, you, no. you, you, yeah, there's probably something like mental illness going with that. But probably, and like, or like, uh, it, it becomes kind of like it. It, it, it I, I guess for those people, it gives them the same, um, the same thing that a drug would do. So it becomes like an addiction problem. Probably, probably, but without going that far. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's it's a part where I sometimes I just quit or stop caring about a band or an artist. It's when there's no place for critics. There's no place for amelioration, I guess. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember seeing a band and I was like, ah, oh. we had a talk with a couple of friends about Blink-182. Mm-hmm. I, I never saw them and I was like, ah. I want to see them live. I really enjoy Blink-182 and I'm pretty sure it's a good show. And all the other guys saw them before and like, no, don't do that. It, they are really not that good live. Oh. They, they, they can't, I don't, I don't they know. They can't but give a performance? Or? Yeah. It's like they're, there's, they're not that good singers, for example, mm. or they've made a lot of mistakes when they play. Tom DeLonge is well known for that. He mm. always missed the good note and like, try to bring back something but mm. I, I think it I, I wasn't a fan I was a bit sad but that's fine I prefer someone telling me that and say okay so if I ever saw them I I, I know what I'm getting into yeah your but, expect- expectations are lower yeah. and, and and if I'm lucky they will have a great night and that would be good but mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure I, I tell that to a real fan and he's like no they're always good but it's impossible Imagine mm-hmm. going on tour like most of the year. You probably have some rough <laughs> nights sometimes. So yeah, you have Absolutely. to admit it. So they are humans. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, that's um, and I feel like that's like I have friends who what like we we like a band, but every time that we see them live, we're like, Ugh. why? <laughs> so, yeah. So like I get that, and I mean. And then it, for me, it kind of not, it doesn't completely ruin, but then like when I listen to the album, I'm like, mm, you yeah, know, but, but maybe it's something you can categorize as I like is, is that music studio, and his album studio work, but maybe because that's something we're going to see probably in the couple next, next year with all the um, TikTokers and stuff that became artist mm-hmm. there's a big difference between being in front of your cell phone and being and giving on stage. a performance for an hour yeah i saw uh, Jaden. He, he talk a lot about that because he's playing with some guy that are really well experienced into, yeah like yeah. travis travis barker machine gun killies and stuff like mm-hmm. that and i remember seeing like the last picture he posts before his first show and it was like a three or four song thing, nothing big. And he's like, maybe it's the hand of it. And at, at the beginning, I was like, hey, ah, kind of weird. And maybe he's he trying to be edgy and emo and stuff. But after that, I realized, no, maybe that's true. Maybe he will just like kill himself artistically because he wasn't able to do it. That's possible mm-hmm. because he never did it before. Yeah. <laughs> So See, that's, a, that's the difference between now and before. Like before people would, the, the, the reason they make albums is to play it live. Yeah. They already know it. <laughs> now it's not necessarily the case anymore. Nope. Which is crazy. It's like a total reverse. Mm-hmm. Um, but what were you saying before? Yeah, so going back to when you were talking about the, the obsession, obsessive people in Japan, yeah. Um, in Korea, they have a term for that. Okay. <clears throat> it's sasang. I think that's how, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but um, it's these fans. And what is insane to me is there are full communities of these types of fans who 
will get their hands on like the band's uh, schedules, who pay money to figure out what plane the guys are going to take. Uh, so oh, that to, they can to see so that, them like everywhere so that they can buy tickets and sit next to them. Like apparently that's why BTS now, when they travel elsewhere, they only take their private jet because they just got I, I too understand. scared <laughs> because there was, there were these people who were like, they were stuck to on the plane next to and well, like eight hours with someone just like watch you from every angle possible. Yeah. And Like th these people, they, they 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 will find out. They will somehow find out the 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 personal phone numbers oh. of the guys, and then when the guys are live, they'll try calling to see if it's the right number. It's like, and like I said, there are communities of this, and I'm just like, this is not just one or two psychotic people, you know? No, it's like this is. Like there, are this whole community of people who feed into this, and I'm just like, why? And, and the anchorage themselves, think, yeah. And how do you think it's okay? And I, I just, I, I don't understand. Because I, I'm pretty sure it's part of the game. Like you, you always heard stories about people waiting at, at the hotel corner of the street, or, like for to see them, like getting out of the hotel, or yeah. Uh, see them after the show behind the, the venues or stuff like that. But mm -hmm. getting into your personal life, it's like, it's a lot, it, it's not a good step. <laughs> no. And like Jay, when he was, I think when he was uh, streaming, um, or I don't know, I, I don't know if it was that or if, if he had mentioned it elsewhere, but like he, he, he was saying like sometimes people would be knocking at his door, like of his apartment. Yeah. <laughs> you feel safe. <laughs> so it's crazy. And, you know, you mentioned people just say, like staying at the hotel or, you know, trying to fit, trying to see them at the hotel. But there was this one guy from another band recently. He's an, also an actor because I watch him in a, in a, in a Korean drama right now. Um, he said at some point in, I don't know what country he was sleeping. Him and his like other bandmate were sleeping in the hotel room. And these girls, got their room key and like went into their room wow like i think at that point you've overstepped the line <laughs> yeah way 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 over <laughs> like this one thing knowing where they're staying and like trying to just scout and seeing them like having a pictures or autograph or something like that yeah. but But going to the next step to figure out what room they're in to get a key card. How do you get a key card? Grabbing people with money, I guess. I or? guess, yeah. Well, apparently the 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 crazy fans they 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 put a lot of money into like all this. I, I guess, but oh, yeah. I, I I don't I don't get that in in a sense of it's not music anymore mm -hmm. because like you said the guy is an actor too so probably just she's he's the character of himself so it, no well this was before i think this was before he was an actor though this is when he was just yeah, a, a singer but when when someone getting into you that much there's no there's no link to do with music anymore no no but That, that that's that's the that's what it's hard to to balance mm -hmm. because i remember what when i was a teen i was probably closer to be crazy but i was a teen and i was alone in my room so there's nothing dangerous about it mm -hmm. i was just like fanatism about kurt cobain and daniel johns and jonathan davis it's because they were my idol mm -hmm. but at some point you get older or you grow out of that. Mm. But when you're an adult and you stay in that state of mind and you go deeper and deeper and deeper, it, it's not about music anymore. It's not about like discover yourself or try to identify yourself as someone else. It's probably like we said, mental illness or something like that. Yeah. But because it, it, it's supposed to be a teen thing. 
not an adult thing, I mm. I guess. I don't know. It's just, eh, I don't know. It's just, it's overall just messed up. <laughs> it, it makes me like sad to think, you know, before when you heard about these things, you think there's just maybe a handful of people who do that. Yeah. But now you realize there's a whole lot of people. Yeah, especially with the, all the contact they have via the internet and social media. That's the thing, because like then people feel like they're, they're, they know them. Yeah, they are friends. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think that's when the boundaries start to get difficult to visualize for some people. Yeah, and, and probably there's a part of being uh, a big name. You, you, you're probably using that false link to catch up with people, having mm. attention to you. Mm -hmm. uh, you're probably selling something, so you want people to buy it. Yeah. But sometimes it's going back to you, like you yeah. create a monster that like, well, loves you so much. <laughs> it's like, um, there was this one, uh, he's like, a, a, he's the, well, not, not, not officially the head anymore. I think he's, so one of the big companies of K-pop is JYPE. And JYP is a, he he's a singer. I think he still does music, but he he's been like there since the nineties. Um, and I think I saw I read an article where it said that when he would be dating, and would be like officially announced, he his sales would drop. <laughs> but you know, which is I, crazy. I, I heard stories <laughs> about the Beatles. They weren't supposed to say they were in couple. Really? Because of, because of that. So we're talking like 1956, 57. I don't yeah. remember. But it's still a thing in 2021. Yeah. And there's not supposed to be a link between your personal life and your song. No. Or... No. And I can't I can't imagine how hard it can be for being a partner, a life partner of someone mm -hmm. really popular, yeah. because you will have you will have people really hate you, like for just being like, you. Yeah, exactly. And and I mean now, like that, you have to be very strong, I think, to be a partner of somebody. And not just that, but I think you have to tell yourself not to check social media to see what's so, being written about you because you. Well, not yeah. Like, of course, there's gonna be people with like, I support them, but what are you? What you're gonna see most is gonna be hate, which is sad. I, it, it's make me think about a story when I was in university. We had a teacher. Uh, she was a uh, girlfriend of uh, the basis of Simple Plan. Don't. Remember oh yeah, I think he told me this. Yeah. And that we we saw that, but in a, maybe a smaller way. But when we look up her name over the internet that was full of teenage girl having like GeoCities site. Uh, sorry, I'm old, <laughs> but like old blogs and bitching about her because yeah. she, she take his art. And when they broke up, that was sorry, but that was a shit storm because they were all against her. Yeah, but like you, they hate her while they're together, but then they hate her after. <laughs> so yeah, because no she way. broke his heart. And but the, the fun part, you you don't know what happened. Mm. Maybe, maybe it's him. Mm -hmm. We don't know, but she was like the the bad, the evil, person. Yeah, <laughs> the, the evil person, the villain. Yeah. And so I can't imagine, like it's especially here. It, it, it if you live in Montreal, you have chance to cross pat with those kids so i imagine like you a grocery store and there's that little kid like shouting at you for being girlfriend with someone she love <laughs> mm, yeah no that's 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 messed up yeah that's messed up but on the other end there's probably a part that's interesting when you into music it's probably open up some other doors like you told us before stories about making friends via a band yeah. or an artist absolutely so, half of my friends <laughs> yeah but it's not just negative sometimes when you get into something you find people that like this thing and probably will become friends or make you discover other bands or other mm -hmm. genres or like 
it, it's not just negative. I know we we went on this the, the more negative side. side. But yeah, there, there's like fun stuff too. I, I remember when I started to listening to other genres, probably when I was in college. It's open doors to discover other people too, mm -hmm. because I was really close to all the rap stuff. I don't know why. I don't remember what they hate about. I'm not a fan of rap, but there's mm -hmm. some rap band I like. But I remember like first time I told someone, oh, I really enjoyed that album. And the guy was like, oh, you like that? And start talking to me. And probably before we never talked because mm -hmm. I was the grungy guy and he was the <clears throat> rap guy. Mm -hmm. And I, I discovered that he likes band that I already liked that wasn't rap music. Yeah. I, so sometimes it's there's something else to discover behind a band it, same thing for me when i discover a band and i get into it especially nirvana it's where i start playing music myself mm -hmm. so yeah, i feel I, like that's a lot of a lot of musicians are, are like that though probably and it, it's another way to get into something because mm -hmm. i remember i was like i really like nirvana i really like nirvana i like their song i liked it I remember I, I was okay. I'm not really good in English right now, but figure me and like I was 13 years old, maybe trying to translate the song without the internet. Eh, that wasn't that oh good, <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't this. I I I I wasn't able to understand all the metaphors and stuff mm -hmm. like that because even in French that was something new to me. But imagine in another language, in another so, language. But I I remember like being like really obsessed with the guitars and it's where it starts. So after that, I started playing music and the only songs I learned were Nirvana songs. Mm -hmm. So I just, there, there's something else. And I still do that today. <laughs> When I discover a new band, I try to learn their song the or, yeah, or see what are their gear because gear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's, there's another way. Like, there's not just negative stuff. <laughs> no. <laughs> And I mean, like, similarly to that, like, I read, like, in the, since the beginning of the year, I started to draw again a lot um, because I felt inspired by so many of the pretty pictures of BTS because there's just so many high quality pictures of them online yep. and they're constantly being released. <laughs> um, and I have like seven, eight years of older pictures too. Um, because I've always wanted to try portraits. I did a few portraits last year during the pandemic, like <clears throat> when our, our, our office was closed, but then like, I kind of gave up, but this time around, I was like, I felt really motivated. And because of that, I joined kind of the fan art BTS community on Instagram, Okay, which is really also really cool because now I, I like, there's, there's these artists that I talk to a lot. And so without necessarily becoming friends with them, it's just really cool because they, you know, they kind of do the same thing as I do. Yeah. And probably you share like tricks and tips for yeah, sometimes, drawing yeah. or painting. Like, I don't know how you call that. <laughs> when, when I, when I, when I wanted to get an iPad, I, I, I messaged a few of the, like the artists that I follow that already use an iPad. And I was like, okay, What size is your iPad? Should I get a big one? Should I get a small one? Did you need a, uh, you know, did you need specifically a screen protector or, you know, because I wanted to know what to buy. Because like, you know, of course you can Google and there's a bunch of YouTube reviews and everything, yeah. but having it from somebody that you kind of know and you know their art. And, like to me, it and felt especially more, when they do the same thing as you want to do. Not not necessarily time. the same. It's just um, because they, you know, they, they all have their different styles. No, no, but I mean because you ask them because they are drawing with the iPad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In no, contrast the, of a YouTuber just saying it's the best buy because no, no, no. no but when, when I was googling, I was googling also artists reviews oh, okay. on the iPad. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, having that. You know, an opinion always weighs more kind of when it's somebody that you know. I Like for me anyways, like uh, I know some people will just base off their stuff on like ob objective, more objective reviews or like, but I'm like, if, if somebody I know tells me it's good, yeah, like, I put more weight on that than the person <laughs> putting up a video that's getting monetized, <laughs> you know? Um, so that was really cool. Cause I, I didn't know, I didn't know what, how much space 
an artwork took. So like, do I need a lot of space? Um, and so that was really cool. And a lot of people are raving about paper, like, which is the, um, matte screen protector for your, your iPad. Uh, and I was like, is that necessarily, are they all getting paid? Cause uh, like a lot of these are like yeah. sponsored, but I really like it. And I'm like, but do you? Opinions uh, are my own, but I got to check. <laughs> yeah. So like some of the artists I was, that I talked to, they were like, well, I don't use one um, and it works fine. So like I didn't get one right away and I'm just testing it out and I'm seeing if I want one one day. But so that was, that's really cool because I got these connections and the, the paintbrush that I bought that I, that I use for like all of my paintings since June I also got recommended from um, from Instagram from one what, a girl on Instagram. She was like, "This is the paintbrush I use." So then I messaged her. I was like, oh, "Okay, can you make smaller lines, even though it's a bigger brush?" And you know, so we I got all of these tools through that community, which is really cool too. Yeah, that just because you all like BTS. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. well, that's really nice. That sometimes there's 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 a great universe behind a band that worth getting into mm -hmm. and sometimes it brings probably more than the band only so it, it's not just like we said it's just not negative stuff there's there's a whole universe behind yeah. the band yeah yeah so, but you know of course what we mostly hear about is the negative <laughs> yeah it sells more <laughs> yeah yeah but um no, so I think we've, yeah. we've uh, made the rounds on the subject. Uh, that's what that's how we get into music. That's what we do when we get into music, and we're we, we, we're curious to know how you get invested. Do you are you more of a casual listener? Do you look up everything and start watching everything <laughs> like me? Yeah. Well, is there any band that make you like want to get deeper than nor you normally do? Yeah. Oh. So let us know. And we'll f you can listen to us uh, after a little break. Yay. Bye. Bye.